Hi everybody, it's time for another experiment. Now yesterday I sent out a materials list to all of you and hopefully you have most of it, if not all. But if you've got most of it, we're good. All right, and the things that we got are my honey, I got cooking oil, I have some isopropyl alcohol, and for that, I'm gonna use a little bit of food coloring to turn it red so that we'll be able to see it when we build our density tower. I've got some chocolate syrup and I've got some lamp oil here, but in my research, I discovered that lighter fluid that you use to light your charcoal grill works just as well. I got some whole milk and I hope you guys were able to find some. I know it's tough these days. Um, I got my corn syrup, I got my dish soap, and I got my water. I'm also going to get another color of food coloring so I can turn that a different color. So our density tower is going to be beautiful. I also asked you to get a bunch of other stuff together. And as I got my own things, I tried to think of alternatives, different things you could use if you didn't have what I asked for at home. So if I've learned one thing with this COVID isolation, you got to be creative. You always need to be super duper kind and you have to be patient, especially when you have a cast on your hand. So you get a, a glass like this, it can hold about 16 ounces. Now, if you don't have a narrow glass like this, cut the top off of a water bottle, it does about the same thing. We need some tin foil, scissors. Okay, I've got some big ones, I got some small pointy ones. I have a ruler that I'm going to need to measure things, and we're going to do it in centimeters or millimeters. I also asked you to get a turkey baster, but if you don't have this, you could use maybe an eyedropper, like the little pipettes we have at school, or you could use a straw. Now, all we need to do for this is take our straw, stick it in the liquid, put our finger on top very securely, and bring it over and drop it into our other container. But you want to make sure that your straw is not too big. I tried using this Slurpee straw and it doesn't work very well. Or you could also use a smaller straw. Now this is going to be used for at the end of our tower. Some of the liquid, the density is pretty similar. So we need to drip it in very, very slowly. I've got some glue. Uh, if you have a glue gun at home, you can use it, but not necessary. Glue works just fine, takes a little bit longer. I've got some masking tape. I have something that we're going to use for our scale balance. And I have the three milk jug caps or a similar cap that's about this big. And I have the tubes that I'm going to use to make my scale balance. All right, here's just a toilet paper tube. Here's one that's cut a little smaller. And if you don't have a paper tube at home, this is three pieces of printer paper. And I roll them up and glue them together. And this is going to be just fine. We want something that's going to roll pretty nicely. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to see how to make your own scale balance, which I think is pretty cool. Before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about density. So what is density? Right? It's the relationship between an object's mass, how much stuff is in it, and its volume, how much space it takes up. And since everything on Earth, all matter, which is anything that takes up space and has mass, has density. So let's use this example here. I have my ostrich egg, and I have a meteorite. Ugh. All right, they're roughly the same size. Maybe the meteorite's a little smaller, but it is a lot heavier. There is way more stuff in this meteorite, I can't even hold it, than in this ostrich egg. Another wonderful example. 
a golf ball, and a ping pong ball. All right, they're about the same size, so the volume is pretty much the same, but we know that a golf ball has much more stuff in it than the ping pong ball. And we're going to also learn that liquids have different densities. You've probably already noticed that. The difference between pouring oil into a jar and pouring water into the jar is different because they have different densities. So let me show you a little demonstration about how I change the density of some water and how it behaves afterward. I've done this dozens of times for you all, but I still love doing it, okay? So in this cup here, I added 30 milliliters of salt, and I stirred it up. Still pretty clear. I'm going to put in some food coloring just to make our demonstration a little more dramatic. Bones loves drama. We don't have enough drama in our lives here now that we're all alone. And I'm going to get my density box out. I'm going to put in my little separator. Okay, remember, salt, no salt. And I'm going to pour this in if I can. Okay, not bad. And I'm going to pour in the salt. So what do you think has happened to this liquid when I added the extra salt? Did the density increase or decrease? And you're all going to say, Mr. Roberts, we've seen it 50 times. We know that the density increases when you add salt. All right, well, let's see. Let's give that a second for our waves to kind of settle down. And sure enough, salt water is all on the bottom, fresh water is all on top because it's less dense. Now in order for us to understand density, we need to be able to measure mass and we need to measure volume as well. All right, but with our little experiment here, um, did I ask you guys to have this fancy digital scale that'll go to like a hundredth of a gram? No. Um, and even a kitchen scale is probably not going to work for us. So it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't know the exact mass of something or the exact size, how much volume it's taking up. As long as it's the same, the volume, as long as the volume is the same. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to make our scale balance. But here in this little cup, I'm going to put one spoonful of water. Let's try to get it all in there. And in this one, I'm going to put my salt water. Okay. Now I can compare. I can lift them up and see which one feels heavier. But there's really not enough here for me to feel a big difference. But this is the whole idea. We know the volume is the same. And now we're going to compare the density by seeing which has more mass. And that's what we're going to use our scale balance for. Now here is where it gets interesting because I want my scale balance to be as accurate as possible. And in order for that, I need to balance my little beam with the cups on top of the paper roll so that it doesn't go from one side to the other. It's pretty darn near impossible. 
So what I want you to do is try to find that spot. So I'm holding the roll and I'm moving my arm over just a little bit each time and then I move my finger, see where it goes. And I'm going to find this spot where it's pretty darn close. Because really, so that's right there, pr I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, and once I have that spot identified, very carefully, maybe this is where somebody can help. Bones is helping me. I'm going to take my tape and press it down on the tube first. And I'm going to go across my beam onto the other side. Now, it doesn't have to be super duper strong because we're not going to be weighing anything more than a few grams. And I'll take some other tape, thanks Bones, and secure that tape in place. So this is pretty darn good. I'm happy with this. All right. I think this will be accurate enough that we can really see the difference between the densities of some of these liquids. I am ready to begin collecting some data. What data are we going to be collecting? I want to find out how the density of each of these liquids compares. So remember, all we need to do, have the same volume, two different liquids, and we'll see which one is heavier. Now, the point of making all the, I made a lot of my tin foil squares here, and the reason for that is to make a little dish. Okay, if we were to pour the liquid into the cups each time, it would be a royal mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make my own little cup here, making a nice flat bottom. So there, I've got something that I can easily dispose of, won't make a mess. Another thing I added were these little bumpers down at the bottom. So the cup doesn't go all the way down to the table and that might cause something to spill. Don't want that. I want to try to be as clean as possible. So I'm ready to begin. And where do I start? I mean, I don't know. All right, I've got all my different things here. I'm gonna start with milk and cooking oil. Now, as you do each test, you're only going to be using one spoon of each of the liquids. When you build your density tower, you're probably going to want to use more of each. 50 milliliters, 75 milliliters, maybe 3 ounces, something like that. So you can have a nice stable tower. Here I go with my milk. And my cooking oil. Now I want to use a different spoon each time so that we don't contaminate each sample. I'm going to hold that right over. Oop, that's another good reason to hold it right over. And I can put my oil here. And I'll put my milk over here. Milk's more dense, right? Okay, this works. So we know that. So we know that milk is more dense than oil. But how does that compare to all these other things here? So I might want to save myself a little time. I'm going to make a little a line from more dense to less dense. All right, more dense will be up here, less dense here. So if I put my oil here, I know that milk is going to be on that side, going to more dense. Okay, before moving on, I'm going to leave my milk there. I'm going to test it against something else. Let's try, let's do corn syrup. Pour my corn syrup in my little dish. Now, it might be that you need to use another spoon to scrape some of that stuff off, especially with that sticky stuff. So you might need to have a supply of spoons on hand. And I'll take this, put it on my scale balance, 
Now I know that the corn syrup is more dense than the milk. So the corn syrup can go up above the oil, because if the oil is less dense than the milk, it's definitely less dense than the corn syrup. So do we need to compare the oil and the corn syrup? No. All right, before I spoil all the fun for you all, I'm gonna let you compare the rest. And before you make your final tower, I want you to make a hypothesis of which liquid is most dense and will be at the bottom, and which liquid is the least dense and will be on top. I thought of a couple other things I wanted to share with you before I let you loose, and just a little bit of technique about making your density tower. Now for some of the heavier things, you can probably just go ahead and pour them straight into your jar, like that. All right, you wanna try and have it go straight down the middle, don't wanna have that stuff get on the sides. And you probably don't need to use a turkey baster or your straw for that. But when we get to the liquids that are a little more similar in density, we need to be much more careful. So I have prepared a solution here of very salty water. And I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. Now, if you have a turkey baster, you can just let the water run down the side very slowly. Now, if you squirt it really hard, it's going to mix with the layers below. And your density tower will look like a um, mess. So if you very slowly pour in the water or drip it in, you can see how that's working out there. I'll do it with my straw technique. Okay, it takes a lot longer, but you're gonna have a really clear separation between the different liquids. So I got my corn oil. I got the very, very salty water. I'm going to now just do some regular water. The little blue now this one, I'm gonna wanna get really close and go really slow with it. You can see the less dense water staying on top of the more dense water, like we saw in the density box. Okay, so that works pretty well. Now if we let that sit for a little bit, the corn oil kind of went to the side and I didn't put it in as much of the very salty water. So that layer's not as big. Now I've got another liquid here that I'm not going to tell you the contents. And I'm going to go ahead and pull some of that up into my turkey baster. I'm just going to let it drip down the side very slowly. All right, and that's a serious, clear difference between those two. Now, I also had asked you to collect some, um, I couldn't find a grape, believe it or not, so I got this little wooden ball I think is about the density of a grape. Got my ping pong ball, I've got a bolt, I've got my popcorn, and I also got a couple of uh, little beans so I can see what happens there. And I got this bottle cap. You might be wondering, what's with another bottle cap? Well, so once you get your density tower done, I want you to drop in these different objects and see where they end up. Now, with the bottle cap, what you're going to do is put it on the uppermost layer, just like that. Then, we're going to slowly add some water. Remember, this is just plain old water. And eventually, whoop, my cup sank. And where did it sink down to? It sunk down to the level of the water and staying above the level of the salt water. So that is what that is for. And I'm sure you are gonna get a bang out of this experiment. All right, look forward to seeing some pictures, everybody. Bye.